So markets are a much broader class of phenomena than we mostly think about. Often when we think about markets, we think about commodity markets. And commodity markets can be anonymous and arm's length. You don't care who you're dealing with. If you want to buy 100 shares of stock on the New York Stock Exchange, you don't care who you buy them from. You don't care whether he took good care of those shares while he had them, and he doesn't worry that you'll take good care of them when you have them. But many markets are not impersonal, and those are the markets I call matching markets, markets where you can't just choose what you want, but you also have to be chosen. And so labor markets are like that. You can't just choose to work for the Times of London. They would have to hire you, and they can't just choose you to work for them. They would have to compete with the Telegraph. So labor markets are not impersonal at all. They're very personal. When, when you make someone a job offer, you're making him a job offer, that individual. Organ transplantation is very personal. Not everyone can take your kidney. They have, there has to be a match. Being admitted to college is very personal. They don't admit just anyone. They admit you. And so many of these markets they're matching markets. You can't just choose what you want, even if you can afford it, which means that price isn't the only allocation mechanism. So these markets need other institutions to work well. So I call a transaction a repugnant transaction if some people would like to engage in it and other people think that they shouldn't be able to. For example, the, the one that got me into this is it's against the law almost everywhere in the world to buy and sell kidneys for transplantation. But there are black markets for kidneys, so there are people who would like to buy a kidney to save their life, and there are people who would like to sell a kidney. But it's illegal in the United States. It's illegal throughout the world, except in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And once I started to think about repugnant transactions, and this is one because it's one that some people would like to do, and, and it's against the law, um, it turns out there are lots of repugnant transactions of various sorts and of various different importance in, in, in the world. It's not always the case that things that used to be repugnant become not repugnant. They can change in the other direction, too. We used to sell slaves in the United States. We don't do that anymore. The most common way of buying passage across the Atlantic Ocean used to be indentured servitude. You would sell yourself into temporary slavery. We don't do that anymore. That, we now regard that as repugnant, an illegal labor contract. Some of these repugnancies are very important for the economy. For In medieval Europe, it was uh, repugnant to charge interest on loans for many, many years. Uh, now, of course, it's not, and we could hardly have the capitalist economy that we have today if you couldn't have a market for capital. So repugnant transactions are a big deal in the economy, and we need to, we economists need to understand better what's going on and why society supports the existence of some markets and not others.